Hello there guys and welcome back to another episode of time travel here on the channel. Now today we're going to be going back to the year 2000, just the turn of the century, and we're going to be taking a look at the Power Mac G4 Cube. Now if you've been a long time uh, subscriber of mine, you will know that I did a video on this in, back in 2010 when I first made the uh, channel. Um, it's a long time ago, six years ago. Um, the video probably wasn't done as best as it could be. And this thing has been sitting on a shelf, probably not been turned on in those six years. So, uh, yeah, I got it down today and I figured why not do a re, you know, look at the Power Mac G4 Cube. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, we're going to be uh, turning this back on for its first time in probably, like I said, six years and uh, seeing what is on it. Um, but a brief history about this um, PC, or I, I guess you wouldn't say PC, <laughs> um, you would say Mac, obviously, but a, a brief history about this uh, computer. Um, this was a very short-lived product from Apple. This was only around for about one year. It was uh, released in the, uh, the year 2000, as I said, and it was discontinued just a year later in 2001. And the main reason for that is this thing didn't really sell very well. Um, and now, this is probably one of the coolest uh, design computers that Apple ever made, at least in my opinion. I think that the cube design is a pretty cool design. Um, I really like have this, like, I have it up on my shelf. If you go on, uh, on my website, teammjd.com, I have a uh, like gallery page and I have a you know photo gallery of this same PC. Why do I keep saying PC of this same Mac uh, up on my shelf? Um, and it's just that's where it sits, and I like kind of have it so it's a uh, display piece, pretty much. And it's pretty cool to like you know look at when I like have people over, they can you know look at it, and it's a you know conversation piece, pretty much. Um, but yeah, I mean that's one of the reasons why people really liked this is because it was a very uh, you know unique design. It wasn't the first uh, cube designed. Uh, computer by any means um, but the reason why that Steve Jobs wanted to make this a uh, cube design is pretty much because he liked the uh, design of a cube and you can see this in his uh, like former company next he actually made the next cube which looks like this I'll uh, edit in a you know picture here um, it was much larger and those are obviously even more uh, rare than than this right here um, but 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 yeah, that's I, I guess you'd say that is the uh, you know predecessor to this uh, like design, and then obviously Apple took this design, made it better, and now that is what we know as the Mac Mini today. Obviously, the Mac Mini is a lot smaller. So one of the reasons why the G4 Cube didn't really sell as well as it could have is because of expandability. Now, obviously, when you have a uh, computer in the shape of an eight-inch cube. You're not given many uh, options for like um, you know expansion cards and adding like a new hard drive, like a second hard drive, and you know extra RAM and things like that. You're you're very limited to what you can do with it. And this was marketed to the like professional users, you know, people who were doing intensive tasks on their computers with things like you know photo editing, video editing, things that would take like a lot of CPU power. And things that you would need to have your PC on a lot for, you know, like, like you wouldn't be using this as like a uh, like so-called uh, kitchen computer where you would like use it um, every so often to like, you know, check your recipes or browse the web and things like that. No, you'd be using this all the time. So because of the fact that it wasn't like, you know, expandable, people didn't really like that. So most people just went and bought the Power Mac G4 which I happen to have right down here. Um, and what people liked about the Power Mac G4 is you could just do this, just take the side door off, and well, there's all your ports right there. There's the entire computer. You can just you know expand the whole thing, add like uh, a second hard drive. This one actually has two hard drives back there. You can add you know more cards, more RAM, um, what you know whatever you need. You know pretty much you could add it to this computer. Definitely a lot easier than you could to the. Uh, uh, G4 cube. Now that's not saying you couldn't add stuff to the G4 cube. Um, you could definitely, you know, add things to it, but you couldn't add as much as you could with the Power Mac or the you know full-size tower Power Mac. 
And also, this was a fanless design, and Apple was, you know, pretty proud of this at the time. They were, you know, uh, like uh, kind of boasting about it. They were saying, like, hey, we've made this awesome computer with no fans. It's going to be air-cooled. Obviously, that didn't go over as well as they thought it would. And many people, um, I have heard some people, not sure if this is a you know, mainstream issue or if this is something that happens to a few people, but there have been some people say that this, um, you know, PC overheats, or not PC, Mac, they say this Mac overheats um, sometimes, and that's mainly because there's not, um, you know, fans in it. I mean, <laughs> there's, there's no fans in it, so, you know, people kept it in a, a cool environment. Usually, if you did that, you were okay, but if you kept it in, like, like right next to like a uh, like window with the sun beating down on it, it probably wasn't the best thing for it, because um, it would like raise like you know temperatures up and everything. Um, but it still is one of my uh, favorite designed Apple computers. Um, so what we're gonna be doing in this video is I, I think that's pretty good for a like you know brief history of it. Um, but we're just gonna kind of be going through sort of the hardware and the software. I'm gonna try to make this video a little bit quick. Um, I know I always say that, and we always go over three minutes, but um, I I'm just going to try to like, do the best I can here. So, um, taking a look at the cube itself, you'll see that it looks like a cube, obviously, because it's a G4 cube. Um, but one of the cool things about it is that you can actually, I'm going to have to stand up for this here, um, is the way that you actually you know access all of the ports and everything. Um, the way that you do this, I might have to take the camera off the, off the uh, tripod for this. Um, I should like you know point out first that you know these are all of your ports right here, um, and these are pretty much things that you like. You can't really add any uh, like expansion cards to this. Obviously, these are the only ports that you're given. Um, but the way that you actually get into the like uh, internals of this machine is with this big lever here. You just push it down, the lever comes out, and you just pull, and the entire computer just comes out like this. It's a really cool way to get inside of the actual machine here. You can see here's the guts of, or, well not the guts, the casing. Here are the guts of the machine. I'm going to take a look at this. So here is uh, your RAM. So like I said, you could add some things to it. So yeah, you can add like, let's see, one more RAM slot in there. Um, but you can't really add any like, you know, port changes like you can on the full size G4. Uh, you can add a Apple Airport card, which is for like pretty much wireless, which I actually had to add this on because um, this did not have uh, built-in wireless. Um, nothing on this side. You have uh, your one hard drive. You cannot add a second internal hard drive, as at least to my knowledge. Um, you can probably take out the DVD drive and add one, but um, but yeah, this is the one hard drive it has. And yeah, that is that, that that is pretty much it. So yeah, I would give them props for how they like. It's a pretty probably the easiest way. I mean, Mac Minis, um, you know, you can access like the RAM I think on it, but you cannot get into like the like entire machine by just pushing on this lever. You know, uh, you, you you just can't do that. I mean, and they've made it kind of more difficult. I got to make sure I'm putting this in right, and it goes in like this. Um, so yeah, that's one of the things that I love about this machine is how easy it is to actually open. Now you may have noticed as I was showing you the bottom ports and the inside of the actual machine that it doesn't have a standard power port and there's no in, uh, internal power supply. And this brings us to another reason why this was considered a failure and why it didn't really sell very much is because of this monstrosity right here. I mean look at this thing. This is the power supply for the G4 cube. I would say like four of these things equal, you know, maybe not four. That's how big that is compared to the cube. About like this whole glass cage down here. So yeah, about four or five of these things would like stacked up would equal the height of the cube. And it is just as long as it, or like, you know, just as wide as it. It's the same width. Um, but yeah, this was, you know, this was never shown in any of the ads, obviously, but it's a huge power supply, one of the largest power supplies for an Apple computer, I think. I don't think they've ever made a power supply larger than this. They might have, but yeah, um, it's a pretty big power supply, obviously, because it has the power. Basically, this is pretty much everything in this G4 right here in inside of a cube. Everything inside of this G4 tower is inside of a cube. So obviously, they have to you know, power that whole thing. 
So they need some some power. So this is the power right here. This is a giant power supply. But yeah, this is a 205 watt power adapter. Yeah, 205 watt. Like my internal power supply for my main desktop PC is 500 watt. So or I think 550 watt. So this is like half of a desktop PC power supply because pretty much yeah, it, it had to power. This is a desktop PC crammed into a cube. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be plugging this thing into this monitor over here and. We're gonna be taking a look at it. I'm gonna fix that glare there because my lights back there. I had to turn that on. Um, but yeah, uh, so we're gonna be uh, taking a look at this. I again, I probably haven't booted this up in about six years. So I'm gonna uh, hook everything up and I'll be right back. Okay, so we are back. Um, I have to uh, like apologize because um, for some reason Audacity did not record the last audio clip. So I'm gonna have to use the camera raw audio, which won't sound as great, but. Um, what can you do? Um, but yeah, so we have this thing hooked up to the monitor. Um, we have kind of a, a, a mess over here, as you can see. I mean, my camera is kind of locked in this position. I need to change the, yeah. So yeah, we, we kind of got this mess over here of these, like, keyboards. Well, this, you know, keyboard and mouse and everything, all these cables and everything. Um, one of the problems that I should mention, uh, there's only two USB ports on this computer. So if you want to use these uh, like Apple speakers, which are really nice by the way, these like um, Apple you know dome speakers, um, if you want to use those while you have a keyboard and mouse, the only way you can do that is if you have an Apple keyboard because the Apple keyboards have USB ports on them to, and there goes the, the mouse. Um, uh, the Apple keyboards have USB ports on them to allow for you to plug in a, a mouse. So I originally was going to use a non-Apple keyboard because I had it like on my desk right here, um, but I had to go in my bin over there of, of uh, my many keyboards that I have um, and grab this one. Uh, not really that big a deal, but if you know if you were to find one of these and it didn't come with like any like uh, you know accessories except for the speakers, like mine did when I got it, um, you'd have to unless you had a uh, like Apple keyboard. You wouldn't be able to like you know plug the actual speakers in unless you had like a um, USB hub because there's only two USB ports, you know, two FireWire ports. Yeah, the the port selection is pretty limited on here. Um, one of the things that I also should mention, I know that I'm kind of uh, you know probably like uh, delaying the whole boot up process, is the button up here. This is actually not a button; it's a touch sensitive um, thing. So I just press it here. Just, yeah, I just tap it kind of like that, and it will turn on. Um, as you saw, sometimes it doesn't really work that well. Um, and sometimes the air will actually cause it to trigger and turn on, which is not good, obviously, because it'll just start turning on and, and like turn off randomly. So another reason why people didn't really like that. But Steve Jobs hated buttons. Um... If you know something, or if you didn't know something about him, there's a interesting fact about him. He hated buttons on his products, um, or like on you know any Apple product, and he tried to limit um, like amount of buttons. So this was them trying to do that. This is like a you know like touch sensitive light. Um, you'd like touch it instead of it being like an actual button, you would push in. All right, so we are back, and I had to kind of uh, change the wallpaper here from that default blue color because it was looking washed out on the camera for some reason. I think it's just my viewfinder though, because it kind of looks okay now. Um, but uh, here we are. This is Mac OS X. I was not able to connect to the internet because it was giving me an error, and I think that's just because that this is such of an old or this is such an old. Uh, network card that's not, uh, you know, like uh, compatible with the new um, 802.11 N and AC uh, standards. This is probably like for, you know, the older standards. Um, like the, I think B and G probably, maybe not even G. I, I, I don't know when 802.11 G came out, but um, anyway, so this is, uh, I'll go into about this Mac here. So yeah, this is Mac OS X 10 or OS 10, because I know someone's going to get me down in, or like, uh, in the comments for saying OS X, OS 10, um, version 10.3.9, um, where we are running with a 450 megahertz PowerPC G4 with 320 megabytes of RAM. Um, and yeah, this is, uh, Panther, 10.3 is Panther, this was originally, as I said, running, um, OS 9, I think 9.4, or 9.04, um, which is a lot of old Adobe programs, but, 
I I didn't really want to wipe those. Actually, that that installation may still be on here. I think that I kept all the old programs. I think there, I think there is, because yeah, we have classic, which classic was essentially a thing where, yeah, no, never mind, no classic system folder. Uh, classic was essentially a thing where like you could, you know, uh, emulate Mac OS nine and like still run Mac OS nine applications when Apple was making the big transition to OS ten. Um, and people still wanted to use their OS 9 apps. So, yeah, this is only running OS 10. Yes, yeah, so there it is right there. Or wait, no, never mind. What was that? Oh, there is still OS 9.04. Okay, so maybe I didn't wipe it. I, I, I thought for sure that I had wiped all those programs off there, but I guess I didn't. But yeah, I think that is pretty much it uh, for the G4 Cube. Again, I, I don't really want to spend so much time talking about every little thing in OS X. Um, that wouldn't really be for this video anyway because it's a you know G4 Cube video and not a um, OS X video. Um, but yeah, that is just about going to wrap it up for the Power Mac G4 Cube. If you guys enjoyed this video and if you want to see more videos like this here on the channel, definitely be sure to like and subscribe. I make videos every week um, on this channel. Um, also, be sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Those links are uh, down below as well. And as always, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.